Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three talking points. Everton won, Fulham won at Goodison Park tonight. The Toffees rescuing a point deep into stoppage time. I think Fulham will be bitterly disappointed. They couldn't hang on and get the three points for Everton's perspective. Not a very good performance at all. In fact, one of the worst for a few years in terms of quality and ideas. But they plugged away and got an injury time equaliser from Beto. His first of the season. And it, yeah, listen, five games unbeaten. I don't think anyone's overly impressed with what's gone on, but they've done all right. But tonight was was definitely up there. Well, it was definitely the worst performance of the season in terms of quality at Goodison Park this season. Um, there was, yeah, just kicking a ball long and hoping someone does something with it is weird. Uh, and that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. That's my first talking point. And I don't, again, I've said it, I'm like a broken record, so I accept it. But I don't understand what we're trying to do. I don't know what the game plan is because it isn't evident. There's no clear ideas being worked on in training that you see when Everton cross that white line. It's a, it's a long, straight ball from Jordan Pickford or a big switch from Tarkovsky and hopes that someone gets in. That's it. And for... Footballers that train every single day of the week to not be able to come up with something better than that is alarming, I think. Uh, I think it shows the manager shortcomings and the coaching staff if if that's all we can do, no matter what the quality of play. Everton have got better footballers than what their style of play has shown today. That was that was awful. No matter what anyone tries to dress it up, in fact, people will, I know they will, and everyone's to their own, and there'll be some people who will tell you that that was great, and it's another game unbeaten, and they enjoy it. Well, that's fine. Again, this is, as always, this is just my view. That's all it is. It's my view. I'm not right or I'm not wrong. It's just my view. But we, in 2024, have got to be better than that. If You know, if I'm the manager and I'm earning £5.2 million a season to say to my goalie, just kick it long. I hope that big number nine can edit and do something with it. Or hope Dwight McNeil can take a corner. I'm not really earning my money, am I? Really. But the big thing is, when Everton used to play Burnley, I hated it. I hated the Burnley games. I hated them. They were horrible to play against. They were dreadful to watch. And yet, they generally played 4-4-2. And they had two big lads up front and he went from back to front really quickly occasionally they'd knock it around but most times you knew what you were getting long diagonal balls or long straight balls one running off two lads jumping they got in wide areas they put crosses into the box and you knew you had to be on it and i don't understand why this manager is is caught between two styles he's gone with the just direct football the long straight ball but he's not got people around him and i'm not saying he should do that all the time by the way i'm not saying everton should play 4-4-2 all the time but in those moments like tonight i just wish sean dyke would commit to it he for me when he made the silver taking calvert lumen off dom should never have been brought off there unless he was injured and i don't think he was because he was shaking his head he didn't look happy Beto should have been alongside Calvert-Lewin, but he should have been alongside Calvert-Lewin 10, 15 minutes earlier. The minute Awobi scored, and I can't, I haven't checked the time that Awobi scored that, but almost immediately after we went one behind, the change should have been made. It's Everton Football Club, and we are at Goodison Park. It's a home game, and we should always be on the front foot, bar a couple of games a season where you know you're up against top-class opposition. They're going to have a lot of the ball. You should be, the way he used to play as well, it's just mad because the way he played, Ashley Barnes, Rodriguez, Chris Wood, long balls, jump, battling, scrapping, trying to keep them out. He doesn't do any of that. I don't get it. He still plays the, that kind of football. But when Don wins it, no one's within 20 yards of him. And yet, when Michael Keane got thrown up, not by the tactical decision, by the way, because Dwight McNeil had to go off injured. It wasn't as if, they come up with that and changed it. Michael Keane won a couple of flicks and better run behind them. We got a corner and we've, we've got 
Fulham turning, Fulham really struggling for that. So I just want the manager in those moments to commit to what he used to do. Play the two of them, get wide, throw crosses in, get long. If you're playing long ball, which you are anyway, play long straight balls, get one of your target, one of your strikers, one go for the header, the other one running behind and start putting teams on the back foot. Goodison Park needs to be a place where we put teams on the back foot. They, there was two incidents near the end where one Calvin Bassey was on the halfway line, put both of his hands on his hips and just stood with his foot on the ball and nobody went anywhere near him to press him. They had it comfortable. Beto come on and started roughing them up a little bit. But it only really come to light when Michael Keane was alongside him because there was two men up front. And in those moments, when Everton go behind their own, 20 minutes left if you're behind at Goodison, you need to be putting the opposition on the back foot. And I just think he should have really been keeping Dom on and putting Beto alongside him and going, right, this is what we're doing. Get wide, get balls into the box, get these lads attacking it. Let's push on. Just go the whole way. Go go full Burnley. Because what we're doing, we're, we're doing it anyway, but we're not really committing to doing it. So everything's half and half. So I think people are confused, as in the players look confused at what they're doing. Just go old school. You're old school what you're doing. So just commit to it fully and we might we might get better results or more goals late on or rescue things that are, are going. There you go. That's my little moan. Uh, second, made up for Beto. Second talking point, Beto. Uh, we know he's not the most refined Everton centre forward. You can understand why Calvert-Lewin is at times the preferred choice because... He's got better touch, first touch is much better, protects protects the ball a lot better than Beto, you know, brings other people into the game. I mean, with Beto, it's always a wrestling match, you know, in arms and he's awkward, he's big and awkward. Still think when he's on the pitch, the best ball for Beto played in behind with a bit of an angle into channels and let him get after it. But he roughed up Bassi and Jot for the 10, 12 minutes that he was on the pitch and got himself a goal and rescued us a point. And I'm absolutely made up for him. You could see what it meant to him. I think if there's anyone in that Everton squad, I really want to do well. It's him. Because I think he wants it more than anyone else. He wants to be a goal scorer for Everton. He wants to be the centre forward. There's reasons why Sean Dykes won't play him. I'm not calling the manager into question there. But I'm absolutely tonight delighted that he's been able to come off the bench and get us an important goal and That'll, that'll do in the world of good. Remind that the manager he knows where the net is. And that's that's leaning back into point one, is that at times there's a need for both of them to be on the pitch, to knock people about. But let's get them tighter together. Let's get them moving. Get balls in. Let them attack it. You know, we had another one where it coming from the, I think it was the left-hand side, and he's cushioned the header back, and Leno, a full stretch, he's got it. You know, he was a handful for Fulham tonight. And he needs to be used. There's time. Of course, there's times when Dom is, is a better choice right the way through and he'll protect it. And if you need to keep it up the other end of the pitch, I get it. But there is definitely a role for Beto to play. Listen, do I think we will move him on in January? Probably. But he's certainly got a role to play till January for us. And I'm absolutely made up for him because for me... It's great seeing a player who it means so much to to score. You see what it was like. And in an ideal world, he'd be backing them every week for us. And, and you'd have that number nine who loves playing for Everton and wants to play and wants to score and wants to do well for the fans and can do it. But made up for him that he scored tonight. And hopefully he'll get a few more opportunities. Like I said, not calling in to question Sean Dyke's um, decision to, to have Calvert-Lewin in the side over him. But I'd like to see him used a bit more and I'd like to see the pair of them used together. But he scored a big goal for us tonight and I made up for him. And the third point is an, is an overall point really to uh, concerning like the freaking group and stuff. There is a few of their people that have been on Merseyside this week and I believe a few of them were at the game tonight. Uh, so they will have witnessed Goodlison under the lights and all that. They've got some key decisions to make. They're apparently been looking at the stadium. I believe they're not happy with a couple of things that, you know, but that's different. 
uh, that's different conversations. We've had, we've seen stories of them maybe trying to buy Nelson Dock as well, which was something Usmanov uh, wanted to do to expand the footprint around our new stadium. And there's also talk of them wanting to put more seats in because quite clearly, and, and to any normal um, businessman looking at it, the ground capacity is way too small that we've chosen. Way too small. Uh, I know a lot of people would want 60, but the minimum it should have been was 55. The bare minimum, 55, 56,000. There shouldn't have been anything under that. And I know I've seen Dan Meese on Twitter arguing the toss, you know, using sort of the American idea of less seats creates the opportunity to charge crazy money, which makes you more money because people will treat it as one-off games and will pay a big a big amount for it. That's certainly what we see over in the United States. Um, but I think our culture is slightly different on Merseyside. I think we'd like to pack it out with, you know, more fans in the place. And I think when you... You've spent so much money, and don't forget it, seven years, I think, now since these plans were drawn up, or, or six years or something. A long time ago, when the, you put, you know, drawing these things up and having them, them chats around the the board, and I know some members of the board and certain CEOs wanted way less than 52,888, wanted 45,000, 47,000, apparently, and were talked up, but it should have been talked up even more. You're moving to a stadium that, without the extra seat, without bumping that capacity up, becomes the seventh or the eighth biggest ground. When you're paying that much money, shouldn't it be a bit higher? Shouldn't we be getting more people in to create more revenue? It's a personal opinion. Some people might be watching this going, I'm, I'm, I understand what they're doing and I'm happy with 53. That's fine. I'm not. I, I, I'm really pedantic enough to go, the, the bare, very bare minimum what they should be doing anyway is another 113 seats, so the capacity starts with 5-3. Forget about the after bit, it should start with 5-3. Who's got 52888? Where's that come from? You know, I know there was talk it could be 51878 or it should be 61878. I'd sort of understand what the play on 1878 would be there, but who the fuck come up with 5288? Why? Like, I... I it's a number that I just it baffles me. So I hope the freaking group are looking at that and do go, no, we, we want to find ways to get more seats in this place. I really hope that's what they do. Obviously, things like choosing the CEO is massively important. Get that in, get that bigger board in straight from the off. Start planning for the football side. If they're changing the manager, whenever it is, have an identity. If it's now, if it's in the summer, whatever. If it's Kevin Thelwell staying, what does that look like? Can we create funds? What's the vision? These are all huge things that they do. How can we make commercial better? These are all the big decisions that they've got to make, of course. Um, but it's good that they're over here. It's good that they're getting in, into it. It's good that they've been at the game tonight. And let's hope it moves to a swift um, conclusion and we can start taking those steps forward. Because that's what we want. We want to feel like the football club is moving forward. That is it from me. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Give the video a thumbs up. Watch the match reactions. Put your clocks back if you are in the UK. Uh, don't put them back if it doesn't go back anywhere else. That would just be a bit mad. Uh, and have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. See you later.